<laughs> oh god. This is very rocky. I should not be riding on this with this bike. Oh no, rocks, rocks, rocks. Oh my god. Holy crap. Hello everyone. My name is Ian. You're watching Big Rock Moto and thank you so much for tuning in today. Let's rewind back in time to 2009, 13 years ago. The world was dealing with the swine flu pandemic, we were mourning the loss of Michael Jackson, and Avatar was a huge hit at the box office. But more to our point for this video, BMW introduced the S1000 RR, and that motorcycle really changed the superbike and sport bike scene and really changed BMW's reputation in the motorcycle world with almost unparalleled levels of performance. Six years later in 2015, BMW introduced the S1000XR. What they did was they took the supremely powerful engine and a lot of the chassis and good handling of the S1000R and double R and put it in an upright adventure styled bike that you could ride all day in comfort. Now, of course, BMW wasn't the first to realize that a lot of riders wanted superbike levels of performance in an upright adventure styled machine, and Ducati actually beat them to this by about five years. They introduced their Multistrada 1200 way back in 2010. Fast forward again to 2020, and BMW completely redesigned the S1000XR. It got a less buzzy engine, it got a host of new technology, it dropped over 20 pounds of weight, and it got a lot more refinement. So today we're gonna to find out if the S1000XR is as good a motorcycle as everybody else says that it is. So here's how we're gonna break this down. We're quickly gonna cover the models and pricing. I'm gonna show you the riding position and the ergonomics of the bike. We're gonna take a tour around the bike and talk about the main specifications that you care about. Then we're gonna get it out uh, on the highway, go through the twisty, see how these things perform. We're gonna take it off-road, even though we really shouldn't be doing that, but we're gonna do it anyway just for fun. Then we're gonna come back here and discuss the competitors to this bike. We'll briefly cover the pros and cons. I'll answer some of the questions you sent in and then we'll have some final thoughts. The S1000 XR is one wild machine to ride. So strap in and hold on. This is gonna be a good one. Now let's get started. Thank you to Bespoke Post for sponsoring today's video. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering monthly boxes of really cool stuff to your doorstep. The box lineup changes every month and each box has around a $70 value. Of course, you only pay a fraction of that cost. 90% of the products in the Bespoke Post boxes come from small businesses, many of which are based right here in the USA. So this is the Weekender box. Let's open this up and see what we've got. So in the Weekender, you've got this really great canvas carry-all bag. Very high quality, very old school, something you'd really, really like to use. Now this is the trail box. And in the trail box, what you've got is this cool kind of ammo style case here. And of course, KTM Orange, we like that for this channel. We've got a Surviving the Outdoors book. We've got a really, really high quality, nice uh, gut hook knife here, which you can use for so many different things. And of course, you've got a paracord bracelet and you've got this stainless steel wire saw, which packs down super, super tiny. So all this stuff could be really, really useful for motorcycle travel. Now this is the bean box. This is also very, very useful for those of you watching this channel. So this is a 600 lumen high quality LED headlight. Now you only have to pay for what you want. You'll get a box assigned to you each month based on the quiz you take when signing up. And before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside to decide if you'd one, like to keep the box, two, swap it for something different, or three, skip the month entirely for no charge. To get 20% off your first box, please click the link in the description below and then a rockmoto20 at checkout or go to bespokepost.com forward slash rockmoto20. Thanks again to Bespoke Post for sponsoring today's video. All right, let's quickly cover the models and pricing. So while you technically can buy an S1000XR for around the base price of $17,600 US, you're not gonna find many of those bikes around and pretty much all the motorcycles you find is in typical BMW fashion are gonna have added packages. And that added package in most cases is gonna be the premium package. And that includes things that you kind of expect that come with the bike anyway, like the quick shifter, tire pressure monitors, more riding modes, heated grips, uh, dynamic suspension, all the stuff that really makes sense to have on this bike. Uh, and that brings the price up to around $20,000 US. 
Now from that $20,000 point, you can also add what my tester here has. My tester has the M package. Now you might remember, or you might know of the M package from BMW's cars. And what the M package adds on this is a lighter weight forged wheels. You get the Acropovic exhaust, you get a shorter windshield, you get a different seat, you get a lighter weight battery, and a few other changes to add a little bit more performance and pep to this bike. So that'll bring your price up to around 23,000 or just under $23,000 US. But in my opinion, I would just go ahead and get that. If I was getting this bike, if you're gonna be already spending $20,000, just go ahead and spend $23,000 and get the best one they make. That's just my opinion. Okay, so let's take a look at the riding position and the seat height. So the seat height on this bike is 33 inches or 838 millimeters. Now BMW, not only can you get a low suspension model, which drops the whole chassis down, but they sell low and high accessory seats, plus or minus about an inch, or plus or minus about 20 millimeters. So you have a lot of option in terms of height. Now let me uh, show you the riding position real quick. So since it's on the center stand, I can balance the bike here and show you uh, exactly how it's gonna be when you're riding it. So this is about the position of riding right here. So you can see I have a slight forward lean, very slight, not very much, just enough to put some weight on the handlebars and get that front end weighted but it's, it's very comfortable. And what I find I do is I use the cruise control a lot and I kind of sit back like this to relax. In terms of leg room, you can see I have a lot of leg room. My knee is not as it, it's not as any sort of extreme angle. And overall, um, I find the riding position and ergonomics to be very, very comfortable, especially considering the sporting nature of this bike. So now I've dropped it down here off the center stand. And so this is how I look uh, reaching the ground on this bike. So I'm five foot 11 or 180 centimeters and I can flat foot this bike on both sides. It doesn't feel tall at all. Also, the bike feels very, very light. At just about 500 pounds, this, is, this bike for me anyway, for my standard is pretty light. Some of you might say that's heavy, but for me, I think it's fairly light for what it is. And I feel very comfortable reaching the ground. Okay, let's take a walk around and also talk about the specs and features of the S1000XR model year 2022. So let's start with the engine and drivetrain and stuff that you probably care about the most. So we're looking at a 999cc inline four cylinder engine. Its rated output is 165 horsepower at 11,000 RPM. And for torque, you're looking at about 84 foot pounds of torque at 9,250 RPM. And it's running a pretty high compression ratio of 12.5 to one, so it does need premium fuel. And of course that's hooked up to a six speed transmission and it does have a slipper assist clutch. Let's take a look at the brakes and suspension. So for braking, you have twin 320 millimeter discs with uh, four piston Brembo radial, radially mounted calipers up front. And then in the back, of course, you have a single disc with another Brembo caliper back there. Suspension travel is just under six inches. I think it's 5.9 inches or around 150 millimeters. And of course it's electronically controlled through the bike's computer. So this is BMW's dynamic ESA. So it adjusts the damping and all the settings as you ride the bike. Tires and wheels, so you obviously have 17 inch front and rear tires. You have a 120 section front tire and a 190 section with rear tire. Pretty wide because again, this bike does have a lot of power. The fuel tank is about 5.2 gallons or about 20 liters, which you're gonna get around 40, well, depending on how you ride, but I get around 40 miles a gallon. So you're looking at getting gas somewhere around 150 to 200 miles, somewhere in that range, which is pretty good, you know, for basically a sport bike. And then our overall uh, wet weight, fully fueled up, is around 500 pounds or 224 kilograms. So what about the payload? So the payload is the amount you're allowed to load onto the bike. So the bike has a total permissible weight of just under a thousand pounds, leaving you about 500 pounds you're allowed to put on the bike in terms of riders, cargo, and gear. Let's take a tour around the bike starting at the front. So I've already kind of shown you a lot of this stuff. You've got the upside down forks, you've got a large radiator here. You've got an oil cooler down here below that. You've got kind of this pointy little beak thing and it does, it's kind of hard to see, but it does have an XR logo there. You've got these LED headlights with the outlines here, which are really cool. So one side is low beam, one side is high beam. They are uh, dynamic headlights, so they are adaptive to the uh, corners in the road. You've got the fog lights down here. Then you have uh, the, I'm, I'm surprised they're not LED turn signals. I'm kind of shocked to see that. Maybe that's just a USA thing, but I was expecting to see LED turn signals at this price. 
You can see the my M Sport model uh, with the M package has the shorter windshield. The standard windshield is quite a bit taller than that. You can see it does have plastic handguards to protect your hands from the cold, harsh wind. You've got standard BMW mirrors, uh, the adjustable windshield here, which you can do with one hand. Oh, that's already in high position. So you can see if that gets pretty low there when you put it down low. Uh, GPS mount comes on this bike. The TFT screen, which we'll go through the screen in a second. Oh, I forgot to take my camera mount off there. That does not come with the bike, obviously. Got your controls all here, as you would expect from BMW. Uh, fuel tank, keyless ride on this model. You have a small storage compartment here, which is handy for like keeping the key in or other small valuable accessories. Working our way around, you can see the side of the engine, the rest of the frame, the swing arm. This model, because it's the M package, has the Akropovich pipe, which is really, really nice. Sounds great. Taking a look at the seat. So the seat, this is kind of controversial dished out seat. So it's shaped kind of like an ice cream scoop. And for most people, I don't think it's gonna be very comfortable. For me, it's only comfortable for about an hour and a half. And then I start to want to take a break. But it does have this very cool M logo, which I mean, hey, that's worth it right there. Grab handles, you've got some sort of mount for some kind of rear luggage. Working our way around the back, you can see that big fat rear tire. Now, an interesting point on this bike is that it doesn't have a dedicated brake light. The brake lights are the turn signals, so that's why those signals are red. It's kind of an interesting thing, helps keep the bike uh, more sleek. You can see the passenger pegs here, of course the chain drive. You get the M endurance chain on the M package, which is supposed to be a chain that I guess lasts longer, uh, something like that can see the driver's foot pegs. I don't know what light ride means, but it's light, so it must be good. You can see the quick shifter module there, this side of the engine, fog lights, and uh, yeah, of course your nice BMW logo. I think that's about it for the walk around. So let's jump on so I can kind of show you the controls. So typical BMW controls, cruise control, hazard lights, uh, suspension and traction control settings here, turn signals, menu switches, fog light switch, over here, riding mode switch, heated grips, dedicated button for heated grips, adjustable clutch and brake lever, so that's all great. Pretty nice and wide and swept backed tubular handlebar. And then the TFT dash, so typical BMW, very contrasty, very easy to read. If you toggle the up menu button there, you'll go through different readouts at the top of the screen. And then if you hit the down button, you'll go into your menus where you can go and see your trip computer, see all your vehicle statistics, uh, change your settings, see tire pressures, things like that. You can also go down into sport mode here, which I'll show you when we ride the bike. Sport mode's really cool because it gives you a lot of really cool racy looking layouts and lap timers and things like that. So with the tour done, I think it's high time we get on board and ride this beast. All right, let's get this thing on a nice twisty road and show you how this thing is to ride in the real world. So the real world is not a racetrack, right? You have bumps, you have traffic, you have sand on the road, you have things like that. And I think a bike like the XR makes a lot of sense. You've got these big wide handlebars, the right riding position, it's comfortable, you can really you know, push it through the corners really fast. And it still has incredible acceleration and speed thanks to the engine. Uh, but it's a more practical package, I think, for actual street riding. So how does it do on a twisty road? Well, the first thing you're gonna notice riding this bike is it's very hard to go the speed limit because in any gear, you can be going so far beyond the speed limit, it's just ridiculous. So with you know 170 about 170 horsepower on tap you really have to try to show some restraint because otherwise you just end up going ridiculously fast like this So in second gear, I, second gear winds out to almost 100 miles an hour when you hit the rev limiter. So yeah, I mean, we get it. This bike is fast, right? So how does it handle? So like I mentioned, because you have this wide handlebar, at these lower speeds where sport bikes can feel a little bit hard to push around, this thing handles really, really well. And for a back road like this, with these tighter corners and all these bumps and I mean, man, this thing is like a gigantic, overpowered, super motard bike. It's so good and so much fun to ride. 
and then you just have the brutal acceleration so about the acceleration you know below about 6,000 rpm you have good pull you have good good acceleration as you can see but if you really want to experience the power of this bike you have to oh there's a coyote or something up there what is that a what is this a coyote well yeah it's a coyote uh, anyway what was I saying so the acceleration is very different above 7,000 rpm than below 7,000 rpm holy crap Man, when you wind this thing up, you better be ready. You better be holding on and you better know what you're doing. This bike is so good for a road like this. Oh, now I wanted to show you the sport uh, mode on the dash. So the bike has sport mode on the instrument cluster, which is separate from the riding modes, right? So riding modes, you have your typical riding modes, which change throttle response, suspension tuning, traction control, wheelie control, stuff like that. I'm in the road mode. But if you go into the sport mode on the dash, what you have is uh, you have different readouts for your tachometer. And in this screen, I can show my braking and my traction control, how much traction control I'm using, how much braking I'm using. It records all that and my lean angles. And then if I scroll right and left here, it actually has lap timers. So I can set it up to show lap timers. And in this screen, you have a, uh, a different type of tachometer. Uh, and you still have a lot of this info here. So I, I actually kind of like, I like this screen right here. So going back to the engine for a second, so it's very smooth, even at low R, even at low RPM where some engines would kind of struggle or feel rough, like look, six gear at 30 miles an hour, and if I roll on the throttle, totally smooth, and actually has a lot of torque and picks up really fast. The quick shifter, which I'm using pretty much all the time riding this bike, is super smooth, as you would expect from BMW. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> this shouldn't even be legal. Well, it's probably not legal the way I'm riding, but third gear pull. Oh, God third gear will have you over 100 miles an hour before you can even think about what's happening second gear it's just really fast I don't know how else to say it about the brakes so the brakes whoa ho ho okay the brakes are very powerful just as you would expect now, if I change to, let's go to dynamic mode, what that's going to do is it's going to firm up my suspension damping. You can also change the suspension damping in, in road mode, too, if you want. <clears throat> what dynamic mode also does is it dials back the traction control and the wheelie control a little bit, so you can have a little bit more fun if you want to be a little bit more daring. I just don't know that there's really a faster or more proficient motorcycle on sale today if you want to go fast on roads like this with like total control and it's still comfortable too you know that's the thing <laughs> oh god you could just carry the front wheel up over these little crests <laughs> Dude, like my adrenaline, my whole body is just like pulsing with adrenaline. This thing is just so much fun, but it demands a lot of respect. Oh my God.
Now I've ridden this road on a lot of different bikes. I grew up in this area. I've lived here my whole life. And man, this is probably the most fun I've ever had on this road. But there's so much power from this bike. Like you gotta be so careful. So what if you just need to cruise at 70 miles an hour? It's very comfortable for that too. I mean, you can hear the wind. It's windy because I have a short windshield, but it's not buffeting. It's just a smooth wind flow. Uh, the, the vibration, so there's a little bit of engine buzz at around, around 5,000 RPM. You start to feel just a little bit of buzz, but not very much. It's not a big deal. It is a four-cylinder engine after all. You know, the riding position's comfortable. Uh, the seat, I mean, a lot of people talk about the seat on this bike. The seat is not as bad as some people say. I, I like a firm seat, but the shape is a little bit weird. So I've been riding for two or three hours already today and I'm, I'm not uncomfortable. Like, like I feel the seat, like it's firm, but it's not, it's not that bad. But I could definitely ride this bike all day or go on a tour with this bike or a trip. It's definitely comfortable enough to do that. And you've got cruise control, so you just set your cruise control. You can kind of relax your grip on the bar so you don't feel as much of the buzz. And it's a refined BMW touring bike if you want to do this all day. All right, now the S1000XR, even though it may be styled like an adventure bike, it's not intended whatsoever to go off-road. 17-inch wheels, street tires, not much suspension travel, no protection, exhaust underneath there, it's very vulnerable. Don't do what I'm about to do, but some of you are curious, so let's see how this goes, and hopefully we won't regret this too much. So, just what you want on your off-road bike, a screaming inline four-cylinder engine. We're gonna, oh, it's very stiff ride. We're gonna have to take it very easy. So can you take the XR down a dirt road? Yes. Is it? Whoa, that's so unstable. Oh my god. Just the tiniest bit of sand. And you feel the front end want to tuck in. Um, can you do this? Yes. Should you do this? Absolutely not. You're going to feel every tiny little bump and any little bit of soft soil you feel the front end dig in. Now, it's better off-road, it's better at this than like a pure sports bike would be, and it's better than a cruiser. You do have this upright riding position and the wide handlebar, and actually the power delivery is really smooth and you can put it in second gear. Now we're starting to get into the rocks here, and this is where I feel like I'm going to get a flat tire because sport bike tires at 40 psi you know you're gonna you're gonna cut you're gonna cut these tires doing this if you do too much of it so i got to be super careful this is not something you really want to be doing oh this is very rocky i should not be riding on this with this bike oh no rocks 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 i gotta pick my way through the rocks here this is not out this is not good okay i gotta turn around because i'm seriously worried about getting a flat tire I know you guys think I'm overreacting, but honestly, it's a real issue with a bike like this, with these sharp rocks. Okay, let's get back to the highway where the XR belongs. Please forgive me, BMW, for taking this beautiful bike on these rocks. I really don't want to hurt it. I really don't need to deal with a flat tire right now. All right, so what are the main competitors to the S1000XR? Now, if we strictly keep this within the realm of super high powered, 150 horsepower plus upright adventure styled bikes, you really have things like the Ducati Multistrada V4, the KTM 1290 Super Adventure. You've got the new Triumph Tiger 1200, the GT model. And we're also gonna talk about the R1250 GS because so many people have asked me, you know, would you get this or would you get a 1250 GS, even though they're quite a bit different. So one main way that the BMW is different than everything I just mentioned is it uses an inline four cylinder engine that you typically find in sports bikes and super bikes. So an inline four has a very different power delivery, a very different sound and a very different feel than a twin or a triple or the engines or even a V4 and the engines that you find in those other bikes. So you may like that or not like that, just depends on your preference.
Now I do want to point out that the BMW, I believe, is the lightest of all those other bikes I mentioned. So if you really focus on outright performance, track readiness, uh, sort of the, the level of sportiness and agility you're going to get from the bike, it's really hard to beat this XR because again, it is the lightest in class, meaning it has really the best power to weight ratio. Now with that comes a little bit of a trade-off. This bike is not quite as comfortable as some of those other bikes that I mentioned. So I recently did a full test of the Ty Triumph Tiger 1200 GT Pro. And while that bike is down around 15 or 20 horsepower on this bike, it is a better touring bike. It is more comfortable. It is smoother. In my opinion, that engine also sounds better. It's a shaft drive bike. But for overall excitement, this thing definitely wins out. Now, if you want the absolute latest in technology, the KTM 1290 will get you the adaptive cruise control, and the Multistrada V4 has adaptive cruise control and blind spot radar uh, monitoring. So this bike is a little bit behind in some of the technology compared to those competitors. Now, we have to talk about the BMW GS because even though they're not really in the same category, a lot of people are cross shopping them anyway because they're both comfortable upright bikes you can ride all day and they're both pretty powerful. Now, the GS is very, very different in almost every way. Not only does it look entirely different, but it uses a very different suspension design. It uses the tail lever front suspension design, which reduces brake dive and it rides very differently. It uses a 19 inch front wheel, uh, which uh, trades off some of the agility and the sportiness and the grip of the 17 inch front wheel um, for a little bit better ride quality and, and it gives you that off-road ability. The GS is more rugged, you can take it off-road. This bike is not good off-road as we've shown. The GS rides better because it has a lot more suspension travel. The GS is more comfortable. It has better wind protection. The technology is also very good on the GS. The GS, what it does is it trades off the horsepower of this bike for torque. So you have quite a bit more torque on the GS. And what I like about that boxer motor, especially the latest 1250, it's got so much low in torque, you can just grunt out of corners at low RPM. And in a real world on real world roads, I think that is a better uh, thing to have than the outright you know, horsepower at higher PM of this bike. So real world situations or using it for touring, commuting, uh, even sport, even like sporty street riding, I would actually take the GS four out of five times. All right, so let's quickly recap the pros and cons uh, to the S1000XR. So what are the pros? Uh, the engine is addicting, it's powerful, it makes you feel like a hero, it's just intoxicating, this, this engine and how much power it has. The handling, it's super agile, it's super grippy, uh, you can fly through the corners. It feels like it's so much more capable than you are as an average rider, if you're an average rider, which I am. Just the capability is, is really incredible on this bike for sport-oriented road riding. What I also like is how comfortable this bike is. Other than the seat and the slightly buzzy engine, uh, the bike is comfortable to ride for long periods of time. I really like the technology, the TFT works really well, the riding modes work very well, the electronic suspension works well, uh, all the electronic nannies, you know, your, your uh, uh, wheelie control, traction control, ABS, all that stuff works great and you can customize it quite a bit, so I like that. With BMW, you're also getting a three-year warranty and they have really competitive financing programs. And finally, I really believe that this is faster and more fun to ride than a pure sport bike on most uh, roads that you're gonna find out in the world. So what are the cons to this bike? Well, we've covered these in the video. The engine is a little bit vibey over 5,000 RPM, although I don't think it's a huge deal and it's definitely better than the uh, Gen 1 XR. The seat is oddly shaped and too thin and just not well padded and, and really not very comfortable for, for riding more than a couple of hours. Also, the ride can be pretty firm. I don't wanna say harsh, but the ride's pretty firm on this bike and that's the trade-off you get with the sporty handling is you feel pretty much every single bump in the road. The other con to this bike is that if you ride it like it's meant to be ridden, you're probably gonna lose your driver's license within a week or two. All right, so let's cover audience questions. So I put out a, a call for questions out there on social media. I'm just gonna run through uh, four or five questions real quick here. So Preston Watkins says, if you could only have one bike, would this be a contender? If I could only have one bike for like all around street riding, yes, this would definitely be on that short list, maybe my top three, probably between this and a Multistrada and maybe a GS. but. I know my bias is showing through, but I'd probably go for the GS just because of its all round ability. And in real world situations, it's almost as fast as this. Mike Merrill says, compare it to a GS as an all rounder. So we've already really covered that in the comparison section. Uh, the GS is a better all rounder than this bike. Although this bike in some situations is more fun. And if you're gonna go to the track, then this is what you want. Dan Ketchbull says, oh, hey Dan. He says, did they fix the vibration issue? Not sure if you rode the first gen, but they vibrated like crazy. So yeah, the first generation had a ton of vibration. It was a well-known issue with that and they did address it with this. The engine is all different in this bike. Plus they, they rubber mounted the handlebars and isolated that. So 
the vibes are not really a major concern with this bike as they were in the previous model. FireMers32 says, comparison between this and the Tiger 1200 GT Pro, two very yet different yet similar bikes. So yeah, I did include that in my comparison section, so we've kind of already talked about that. The Triumph is, is quite a bit softer and more touring oriented. It, it's not as sharp, it's not as powerful and fast and ferocious as this. The handling's not as good on the Tiger. This is more of a performance and track oriented sports bike that just happens to be upright. The Tiger 1200 is more of like that adventure touring bike that's also a very good sport touring bike. So very, very different, um, but the Tiger's, the Tiger would be very, very high on my list. I really do like that new Tiger, it's a great bike. Le Savage says, how extreme or not is it to use this bike as a daily rider, commuting to work and filtering traffic, all that stuff? I don't think this is extreme at all. And uh, I would definitely have this on my short list of all around street bike for doing all those things. It's not uncomfortable. It's not, the, it, the ride isn't like terribly harsh. You're not hunched over. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't do anything wrong or, or anything that would really put you off as an all around used street bike. So yeah, it's not extreme at all. And I would definitely buy this as an all around bike. Final thoughts on BMW's S1000 XR. This is one of the most exhilarating motorcycles that I've ever ridden. And what comes with that exhilaration is also a surprising level of comfort and practicality. I mean, put simply, if you want a bike that has extremely high levels of performance and something that you can use for almost any purpose on the street or the track, this bike needs to be very, very high on your list. It's superb. And there really aren't many compromises that come with it. The downsides, we have talked about a few of the downsides in this video and keep those in mind, but really this bike is super appealing, I think for a wide range of people. And I highly encourage you to go get, get a test ride on one if you can. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video very useful. If it was, please support Big Rock Motor and there's ways to do that down in the description below. Other than that, please ride safe and I'll see you out there.